Tony Robbins. Great to see you. How are you? I'm doing awesome. How about you? I'm doing good. I, I know you are in the midst of a crazy schedule and took a little time out from your business mastery event you're doing here in Las Vegas. Yes. Uh, congratulations on what you do with that. I have so many friends that have raved about that program for years. I'm really pleased with it. Yeah. Um, but thank you for taking the time. I know you've, you've got a lot of stuff going on. And, and um, our audience here inside of the network marketing space. Yes. They're passionate about becoming professionals inside yes. of the space, taking their skills to another level. They're, they, they believe, as I believe, that for the average person, it's just a great option for someone to take charge of their life and become an entrepreneur without a lot of the risks that are typically associated yeah. with becoming an entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, you've been around a long time. Uh, you've, you've seen a lot of different things. What are your thoughts about network marketing in general? Uh, and the you know, what is your thoughts about the decision that people can make to become entrepreneurs using it? Well, it's interesting. You know, I'm doing this program right now, and I got a room, you know, of a couple thousand people from 44 countries. They're all business owners. Some of them are businesses that are approaching a billion dollars. Some of them are haven't even started yet. Right? They're just picking their business. So it's really variety. And one of my goals in that event is to actually get people to not go in business. And the reason it sounds horrible is someone spends ten thousand dollars come to an event. I told them up front. Some of you are not made for this because to run a business requires a certain natural capacity and nature, if you would, besides skills that you learn. And it's the ability to handle risk. It's the ability to handle stress. It's the ability to do a lot of different things. And you have to be able to manage finance. So you, most people, they have some of those skills. And that's why every year, 50% of businesses that start are out of business. You know, you look at over any, you know, five-year period of time, 80% are out of business. And over a 10-year period of time, only 4% make it. Now, make it doesn't mean that they're making any money, right? That just means they're still standing. 96% fail. And after 10 years, you're set, right? <laughs> no. You know, look at Lehman Brothers, right? Around for a century. You know, they did combined a trillion dollars in revenue over that century, and they're gone. So the world, you know, technology changes, products and services changes, it's so competitive. So to really be successful, it's a really unique situation. What's beautiful about network marketing is you get all the benefits of being an owner, but you don't have to be worried about supply chain. You have to be worried about accounting, especially in the world we're in today. I mean, network marketing used to be a little bit more different, but today with technology, you can know what's happening in real time. The companies have already set up the software. They know what happens. So it's really picking the right company. And there's a lot of great companies in that area. And it's really realizing that you're really a value creator. If you can go out and add value to other people's lives, if you can just introduce people to a product or a service that a company represents that truly is extraordinary, some products and services can't just be thrown up on Amazon. They need the story to be told. And if you found a product or service of that nature and you got a company that has a generous schedule of being able to reward you and then you begin to get leverage where it's not just you, where you multiply your efforts to other people, then you get the, all the benefits of being a business owner without all the headaches and without the same level of risk. And so I think, um, I think network marketing is amazing. Now, network marketing has a mixed reputation, and we all know that, right, in the marketplace. And, you know, anybody goes out there, what are you doing? That's why you got to own yourself as a professional. I think that's why I'm supportive of what you do, because you're not just pumping people up. You're giving people real skill sets to be a pro. If you're a dabbler in anything, you're not going to succeed. So I don't think you should have the delusion that network marketing is the way to get rich if you're just going to try it. This is something you got to commit to and say, this is my profession. I'm going to be better than anybody else in this area. I'm going to get the skills and the ability, and I'm going to, I'm going to hone my talents, and I'm going to build my teams, and I'm going to constantly get better. But I don't have to take the risks of starting a business traditionally, and I don't have to be good at all those things that make it so hard for the vast majority of humans never to be able to succeed. And, and again, in this business, you don't have to wait to start making money. You don't have to hope that you can cover all that overhead. That overhead is being covered by the company. So... I'm a big fan of network marketing, always have been, and I think the real thing is making sure you pick the right company and that you continue to grow your skill sets. The constant never-ending improvement, what you've talked about for forever. That's correct. Right? This, the, this concept that you're always going to be getting better at your skills, you're always going to be getting better at your mindset, you're always going to be getting better at how you communicate with your groups, how you're building teams. Yeah. The, the challenge is people get into something, anything, and in the beginning it's exciting. I mean, of course it's exciting. You join this new company, you have this new opportunity, you get a new relationship. You know, even a new job is exciting in the beginning. But then there's the law of familiarity. If you get around anything enough, you start to take it just a little bit for granted. 
and you just can't do that with your own business. And that's really what network marketing is, is your own business. You gotta say, this is never ending improvement for me. And I'm, I'm hooked, I'm hooked on this idea that I can get better and better. My income is not limited by my time because I can now produce results to other people as well. And I don't have to spend my time doing things I really don't wanna do like accounting and shipping and all those other elements. So um, I think if anybody's listening to this and they're on the edge, if you're on the edge, don't do it. Yeah, for <laughs> you know, sure. It's like step up. If you can't step up, it's the wrong thing for you. But network marketing makes it the easiest that I know of to step up if you become a pro. Now, you're talking about uh, in Business Mastery, the yes. this event you're doing right now, you're talking about giving people the best practices of everything that's happening in the world. That's correct. Uh, and, and, and from you and also a collection of experts um, sharing ideas. Just to entrepreneurs in general, uh, and you're an entrepreneur, wildly successful entrepreneur, and uh, you work with and are friends with many, many of the top entrepreneurs in the world. What are a few of the common attributes of the super successful entrepreneurs that you've seen? That might not be the obvious ones that yeah. you know come to mind. Well, gosh, uh, you know, uh, I give you one example. I was just talking to him yesterday. Mark Benioff is a dear friend of mine, and he runs a company called Salesforce.com. He founded it. Mark went to my Unleash the Power Within event about 15 years ago. He went to it three times. You know, it's, you know, it's repetition is the mother skill. He immersed himself in it. Again, a pro, not going to do something average. Comes up to me and introduces himself and says, Tony, he says, I, you've changed my life. I'm working for Oracle. I'm leaving. I'm starting this company, Salesforce.com. We're going to change the business world. I'm never going to say, we're going to do a hundred million dollars in business. I was teasing the other night. He's going to do seven billion this year, right? And I've been on a 15 year journey with him. You know, what, what do they have in common? They have a sense of something they want to serve greater than themselves. You know, the only challenge sometimes in network marketing, and I think what gives it a bad reputation for some people, is you get people in there that really act like they're doing it for something larger than themselves, but it really is only them. Now, there's nothing wrong with you wanting to profit and be successful, but motive does matter. And the most successful entrepreneurs have a motive that includes themselves, but they want to do something that's going to change the world, make the world different. It's like, you know, when you're trying to meet your own needs, you get a certain level of insight. If you're trying to meet the needs of a fam your family, you, you get a different level of insight because life supports whatever supports more of life, more people. If you're trying to support your community, you different insight. If you're trying to you know, have an impact on the world, it's even larger. And I found in network marketing, you find a few missionaries that are like those other entrepreneurs that really is their mission. They'd honestly do it for free. And you know they want to make money, and they do make money. But if you're only doing it for the money, the unfortunate part is... Um, people sense that and then they feel like it's just a transaction as opposed to an uh, experience of added value. It's only one way on earth to really become wealthy and that is do more for others than anybody else is doing. And if you can find a way to do that through your vehicle, like network marketing, there's no limit. But people sense what's really driving you and you can't fake it because people's bullshit meters today are so big because everything's bullshit. Reality television is bullshit. You know, it's, that's, it's even fake. So if you can just be raw and real and connect your mission. That is not to say that you're not going to benefit. Hell, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate enough now. I got 21 companies. I got 12 I actively manage. We're gonna we're approaching six billion in revenues this year, and I'm a guy that started out, you know, in a 400 square foot bachelor apartment in Venice with no business background. But what has been my driving force is every industry, every company I've been to. It's like. I'm on a mission to create massive improvement and change. And I don't just say that shit. If you want to know who I am, you don't have to watch how my lips move, watch how my feet have moved for, you know, three and a half decades. You know, actually 38 years now. I started when I was three, I think. Or something right. like that. But, but that's it. Find your mission, find a motive greater than yourself. And ironically, you will be doing incredibly well yourself as well. Yeah, I found that the same thing's absolutely true. I, I want to transition to a project talking about giving, talking about yes. uh, helping other people. Yes. Um, you, I've been waiting for a lot of years for a new book from you. <laughs> yes, and I, I think a lot of your audience is like, "Come on, uh, uh, you know, when are you going to put out a new book?" And you finally came out with a book, "Money Master the Game: Seven Simple Steps to Financial Freedom," and it is a Tour de force. Man, did you do some work. Thank you. Um, uh, the interviews that you pulled off and the access that you gained. Um, to, to our audience, uh, what I've been trying to pound on, because if there's an, an attribute of even the successful people in network marketing, yes. it's financial uh, being financially oblivious. Yes. Uh, and just spend all the dollars yeah. faster than you get it. Yeah. 
file an extension on your taxes. Don't even do, you know, do quarterly estimates. They don't even pay attention to that stuff. Yeah, I know. Um, so one of the, the theme that I really loved, one of the themes that I really loved, and I've started to, to, to uh, promote within our community around the world, and there's 100 million people now in network marketing around the world. Wow, I didn't know that number. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah, 100 million. Wow. Uh, $182 billion a year in sales. Yeah, I knew it was in, in, total. in the 200 yeah. billion range. So 100 million people are involved. And the, the theme that I like is you, you teach people to have two businesses. Yes. One is the business of how you're making your money. Yes. And the second is the business of your investments giving you an income stream. So for people in network marketing, one is to create, you know, maybe transition from a job to a network marketing career. Yeah. And then once you're there, try to get your investment income to surpass your network marketing income. Right. So, so first of all, what drove you to, to create this book? Um, and, and what could a person inside of network marketing benefit from, I've already benefited tremendously, yeah. right? Because uh, I, I came out of that world, yeah. right? You know, it's just you're you're pedaling as fast as you can, yeah. and sometimes you're just focused on growing the group, and yeah. you forget about the dollars. Yeah. And sometimes it's programming, mental old stuff. For sure. For me, it had to do with self worth. It had to do with if anytime I got money, I had to spend it as quick as possible. Yeah. I had to buy everybody dinner. I had to you know, bank bad investments so I'd be back to that familiar crisis mode again. Yeah. So that was my issue with money. Yeah. So it wasn't even strategy for me. Yeah, it was some programming stuff for me. So the people inside of our space, how could they benefit from having a better financial IQ? Yeah. And, and what can this book do in order to be able to help them improve that? A lot of questions. Yeah, I know, I first, know. The, the, the first one is, uh, I didn't write a book for almost two decades, like 18 years, primarily because I just hate writing. <laughs> I love the live event. I love the spontaneity of in the moment, come up with a solution and show people. And then I've had a few day jobs because, you know, about every last year I was on a plane or on stage every four days. So, and then I was doing it in 16 countries, to give you an idea. Uh, and, you know, I love seven, 10,000 people and the energy, the impact. Sitting a solitary writing book I didn't want to do. So why did I write a book even then? I don't need to write a book. Simon Schuster's had an offer for me forever and wanted me to do it. Was because in 2008, when I saw mass number of families losing their homes, mass number of families losing half their retirement, it wasn't like statistical to me because I grew up with no money. I grew up in an environment, we had no money for food. Um, in fact, I donated all the profits of this book in advance. I've been feeding four million people a year for Gosh, the last 10 years, I've been feeding people since I was 17, because when I was 11, my family got fed, and I said, I'm gonna give back. So 17, I fed two families, and then four, and then eight, and then my small company got involved, and eventually I got to a million, and then two million, and then for the last six years, I've matched the two million that my foundation does, personally feeding two million. But I thought, I've fed 42 million people in my life, I wanna feed that many people in a year. So I said, I'm gonna feed 50 million people, and I called and said, if I took all the money from this book, you know, feeding America, you know, how many people are going to feed? And they said 10 million people. I was like, geez, you know. So I finally just wrote a check higher than that. So I want people to know. I wrote this book to give it away, to give away the content. Um, but I wrote the book because I wanted people to have real answers. And I have a unique gift that most people aren't aware of. And that is I've been coaching one of the top 10 financial traders in the history of the world. His name is Paul Tudor Jones for 22 years, my 22nd year with him. And he's not lost money in 22 years. Now, there's no one on earth that you know of that could say that, who's a top financial person at that level. And I mean, daily, I've got him. He sends me the note of what's going on, nowhere to go. So I've got a level of insight. So I thought after 2008, when I saw this happening, I said, you know, I'm not everybody. I don't have the whole solution, but I got access. So what if I interviewed 50 of the smartest people on earth who started with nothing like us? and then built billions, you know, top hedge fund guys, as well as, you know, the academia guys, the guys that are the smartest, you know, in the room intellectually, who have studied what works. And let me put it in one book, and if I could put it into a system, like a seven-step system, and that's what I did. And so it took four years, and I'm thrilled with it, and the impact's been amazing, and the endorsements I've got have been, you know, yeah, you know, huge. guys like T. Boone Pickens, or Carl Icahn, you know, people of that nature. And it's because they all read it, this is, this is the real thing. So the answer to your question is, I was just in my seminar, we've been four days into it, and almost everybody there knows, has a plan now to grow their business 30 to 130%, some 200%, with no bullshit. Like I'm talking about a conservative plan, where they walked in thinking, how would I grow 10 or 15 you know, in the marketplace? 
And, but after all that, I still want them to know, and that's why my conversation with them today is, you gotta have your core business, and you gotta have a second business with no employees that takes you 15 minutes, maybe a month or a quarter. You can actually make it 15 minutes a year. And I want that second business to be the one that makes you financially free. So if anything ever happens to your core business, you're still set. And I can really show you how to deliver that because that's what these people have done. And all I'm talking about is stop, make the most important financial decision of your life and stop being a consumer and start being an owner. Mm. And the way you become an owner, it's simplistic as it is, and we all know it, but I get people to do it, is you take a percentage of what you earn, like we all know, and you decide this is not going to Kate Spade, this is not going to Louis Vuitton, this is not going to some beautiful restaurant, this money stays in my family, and you automate it, and you put it into an account, and then you figure out where to put it, but that money has to disappear. You have to know it's not, you have to not see it. If that happens, you got the first step to success. The second step is once you have that, you've got to understand the rules of the game because so many people get taken advantage of who may be the few that actually put the money aside. And you know, the people in multi-level marketing, like you said, they're running their team, they're running their family. How am I supposed to be an ex financial expert? You don't have to be an expert, but you have to know the rules of the game because this is a place, if you don't know the rules, you will get hurt. Yep. And my goal with this book was to take people from being the chess piece to being the chess player. And I knew I could do that with a mom who's just getting started or a millennial that's got a bunch of college debt still do it or a totally sophisticated person who thinks they're sophisticated and I show them what Carl Icahn's doing and they go, holy shit, yeah. this is amazing. It blew, my, it blew me away. I so, so, the, but, but, I want, but, but the thing I want to get people to know is if you set this system up right, and I have inside here, for example, I asked Ray Dalio. Many of your audience probably don't know who Ray is. Ray Dalio, if you're really rich, you give your money to a hedge fund usually to invest your money. And a big hedge fund might be $15 billion. Ray Dalio is $165 billion. He is 10 times bigger than, any, than the richest hedge funds on earth. He manages money for China, to give you an idea, right? Wow. So I go to Ray. Turns out he's been a fan of mine for 20 years. Really helped. I sit down with him for four hours. He gives me these incredible answers. And at the end, I said to him this, and it relates to your audience. I said, look, I deal with people that have... 20 day jobs. I mean, they're trying to be a mom, a dad, you know, do something in the community, run their business, you know, be an athlete, you know, do well financially, do something for the community. And I said, they don't have time to be a professional. And you just got done telling me these professionals you're going to might be nice people, but they will never, they're, they're never going to do it. 96% of mutual funds, for example, which is where most people put their money, don't match even an index over a 10 year period of time. That means if you're here in Vegas and you go play blackjack, and you say, I'm going to find the 4% that are successful. If you play blackjack and you get two face cards and your inner idiot says, hit me, you have an 8% chance of getting an ace. you got a 4% chance of getting a mutual fund. So I said to him, I said, Ray, what you shared is amazing. I'm going to teach this. But you got to teach me this principle of what you do in actual numbers. like So people could just go do it. 3% of this, 10% of that. He goes, Tony, I can't give you that. He goes, that's my secret sauce. People have to have a $5 billion net worth and give me $100 million before I'll even consider taking their money. And he said, that was 10 years ago. And I said, that's the point. You haven't taken money in 10 years. You're not going to take any more money. So give me the secret sauce. <laughs> help me help the average person, right? And I got him. He goes, well, Tony, he goes, like, it's really complex. I said, I'm good at taking complex and make it simple. He goes, well, I use leverage. I said, design one without leverage. He goes, it wouldn't be perfect. I said, your idea of not perfect is everybody else's idea of da Vinci. You know? So I said... And he goes, well, and he lays out this plan. And he goes, go back test that. He goes, you know, when people talk about past performance doesn't equal future performance, that's because it's like a five or 10 year period of time. He said, test it over the entire modern history of investing, say 75 years, and tell me what you find out. I hired the firm to test it. 85% of the time in the last 75 years, think about all the up and downs of markets in the last 75, 85% of the time it's made money. And when it lost money, it didn't lose 50% like 2000 or 51% like 2008. It lost 3.99%, just under 4% in the worst time. If you could go to Vegas and make money 85% of the time when you lost, you only lost 4%, how much would you invest, right? How much would you invest? Tom wouldn't be here. So I want people to know this book will show you exactly step to step what to do. And you want to set it up so that everything you do, your day-to-day -day business is wonderful. But if that went away you're still financially set. you can set. start even if you're small. You start, literally, you can start with nothing. Start with $1,000, $500 to make this thing happen, and, and it'll guide you straight through it. I love it. Uh, everybody, please get this book. Get your hands on it. Make sure your teams get this book. 
have some concepts, get the concepts ingrained, put it into your training, make it a part of your culture. Think of it as this is an area you got to master, but it's not something that takes a lot of time. Yeah. That's why I call it money master the game. It's a game. You want to master that game and there's seven steps. Anybody can do it. Right. All right. Um, one more question for you. And I appreciate the time. My, um, my pleasure. The, uh, we have our GoPro Recruiting Mastery event yes, coming up in October. I'm going to be there. And, and <laughs> the reason, let me tell you the reason why. I, I feel like I've developed some, I have some, you know, some, some mentors like you've had and, and some people who've helped to simplify some complex things. And inside of the network marketing space, I feel like I've done a pretty good job of simplifying the skills necessary for a person to go pro. Yeah. Um, but, and I've done a lot of coaching, especially over the last two or three years, the biggest obstacle is not the skills. No, never. The biggest obstacle is the, the breakthrough that is required in a person's right. mind right. in order to be, go, to be able to go to another level. Now, you're a busy guy and you're not, uh, cheap to bring in, but we did it. And the reason why we did it is, is we wanted you to come in and spend an entire evening with this group, the people who are there and people watching on live stream to be able to help each of them have a breakthrough, an, an emotional, a, a, a spiritual, a, a total transformation in their mind and their business. Yeah. What are you going to be sharing with people? What can they expect to learn? What can they? What kind of results can they expect to to achieve as they leave there? What What are you going to be bringing? Well, I've been obsessed for thirty eight years with that one word, breakthrough. Mm. I'm not interested in change. People change all the time. They make a lateral change. They go from, you know, overeating to smoking. <laughs> you know, they go from one bad relationship of one way to another one. I'm interested in a breakthrough. A breakthrough is a moment in time when everything changes and it changes for the best. And the beautiful thing about a breakthrough when you really start studying it, which I've done for 38 years, and I've looked at it, financial breakthroughs, business breakthroughs, emotional breakthroughs, and you really see a breakthrough, it's a moment in time that occurs. Like people will say to me, so often, well, it took me 10 years to change this. And I say, bullshit. It took you a moment. It took you 10 years to get to the moment where you actually broke through. That moment where your brain said, not another day, not another hour, not another moment. This is over. I'm changing my body or I'm changing my relationship or I'm, I'm, I'm no longer going to do this. I won't tolerate this because most of us get what we tolerate. And we don't realize that that's, there's that point. And I'd be willing to bet every one of the people listening or watching here has had breakthrough moments where you struggle with something for a long time and promised yourself you're going to do it or change it or, you know, and then you didn't do it. You didn't. And then maybe finally something happened that pushed you over the edge. So I have been obsessed with finding what pushes people over the edge. And then more importantly, what sustains the breakthrough, right? And, and when it comes to business, that's what they have, business ownership. I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt that the chokehold on the growth of any person who's watching or listening, anybody in network marketing, any business owner, the chokehold always is the psychology and skills of the owner or the leader. Always. You're, you will never grow your business past your own development. And I tell people that like when I start seminars and they all want to know strategies and I have so many business strategies and I love to wow people with the strategies that save them a decade. But I don't do that. The first day of everything I do is pure psychology because I give you 10 strategies and how many people have shown you a strategy, the answer's right there, and people still don't follow through. And it's simply because of that. So don't get me wrong, skills are critical too, which is why I think what you're doing is so invaluable. But I'm, I feel privileged to come in and add to that because I found it's 80-20. 80% 80 psychology, 20% skills. Now if you don't have the skills, you're not gonna succeed. But if you don't have psychology, you have the skills and you still won't follow through. And so I'm going to take people through a process over about three hours of immersion that you're never going to get doing one little thing at a time. It's kind of like, you know, most people have taken a foreign language in high school and college and you ask them today, speak some language, they can't speak squat. That's because they did the little thing at a time. I'm an immersion guy. If you're in it, breathing it, smelling it, tasting it, that's what we're going to do for three, three and a half hours. And at the end of that, you're going to storm out of there. You'll know what was holding you back. You'll know how to shift it. And you'll physically shift it. And it'll be in your body. And it'll be resident. And you'll have a daily practice, a simple daily practice of less than 10 minutes that'll put you in the place to maximize every single day. And that's what it really takes. Hmm. So if a person's trying to decide, hey, should I, should I get a live streaming ticket? You know, should I find a way to, to get to that event? What, what kind of advice would you have for them? Don't do it. If you can't decide to do something this valuable for your life, you shouldn't be in business. <laughs> Please go back to working for someone else. You really should. 
Got it. Go work for someone else. You're not cut out for network marketing. Either that or <laughs> grab some gumption and push yourself over the edge because, listen, I mean, I, I tease about it, but it's true. You know, your income will never far exceed your personal development and your business mm -hmm. development. It just can't. Yeah, You're never going to see a person influence someone of higher influence when they haven't grown in themselves. I mean, if you're growing, you can lead. You don't have to be perfect. Nobody's perfect. I'm not far from perfect. But if you're caring and if you're growing, people sense that about you because the average person is not. And that's attractive. That's going to pull people to you. You know, a lot of people are like, how do I get people? The fastest way to get people is develop yourself and people will sense it. And when you talk to people, you know, they sense that, you know, whatever you're saying is the tip of the iceberg. They know there's so much deeper and they want more. And what better to do in life than to become the kind of person that you know you're not perfect, but you're growing constantly. And because you're growing, you have more to give. And so I'm obsessed. You want to get better? <laughs> Life gets better. My original teacher, Jim Rohn, used to say to me, Tony, for things to get better, you got to get better. You know, for things to change, you got to change, right? And I can tell you, if you're going to add more value, you can't just hope good ideas are going to just show up out of the blue. You got to pursue them. Great ideas are going to change your life. Don't interrupt you. You pursue them, you use them, and they change your life. And, and we're going to create an environment where people that day who are there will not forget that they're there. It'll have an impact for years to come. Uh I will tell you that the, Jim Rohn also talked about the day that turns your life around. Yes. That's that day of disgust, that day of determination, that day yes. when you finally make the decision, yes. like you're talking about. Yeah. And I think that the people are going to attend. And the reason why we're, we're bringing in, the reason why I'm excited to work with you in this project and with this huge group of people around the world is I want them to have that breakthrough. That's cool. I want them more than anything else to go out there and just absolutely crush it on every level. Well, the reason I'm doing this talk with you, my dear friend Sam, who you know, yeah, yeah. you guys are good friends, you know, put us together, arrange this, is I know you're totally sincere, and I know there's a reason there's 7,000 people come to this, it's because you really deliver the goods for people on your own. So I feel like you're a brother on the path, and together, hopefully we can do more than we would do separately. Yeah, man. Hey, I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you very much. My and, pleasure. Uh, looking forward to tearing it up with you in October. I'll be here. All right. See you then.